Let's first uh, introduce myself. I am Nick Bowers. I work as a knock engineer uh, at SpeakUp. They do voice over IP thingies, like, uh, like was presented. Um, and by night, I'm a uh, hacker, tinkerer, uh, and a hosting provider. I do some uh, hosting provider work for, uh, for small businesses in, uh, in and around Enschede. So let's uh, get started. Why did I choose the Albert Hein to reverse engineer? Well, they're close by to me. And, um, uh, they give benefits to people that use a bonus card. And that bonus card uh, is meant to be linked to you as a person. Uh, and that gives you all kinds of discounts. Um, and another reason was that, uh, uh, I mean, other supermarkets also have an extensive API, so maybe you'll find some inspiration from this. Uh, and uh, reverse engineer, for example, the Jumbo app or uh, the app in, a, uh, in another country. So let's explore the API. Um, we have an app, and this is a, a very simple screenshot of uh, how the app can look. This is uh, well, some, uh, some discounts and some, some products uh, that, are, that were last, last bought. And um, what happens in the background when you open this page is that you, uh, your app does a GET request to well, this URL. And how can we find, find this out? How can we see what the app is doing in the background? Well, it's very easy. There are these tools. And there are other tools as well. But these are Charles and Burp Suite. And what you, what you can do with these is um, man in the middle your own phone. That can be very interesting. Um, what you need to do is install a certificate authority on your, on your phone. It needs to be trusted. Um, and once you do that, um, and the app hasn't been secured against this, because the most bank apps will be, uh, and other apps as well. Um, but the Albert Hein app is not. So when we install our own CA certificate, we can listen to the traffic. Um, if you have a Mac with a M1 processor or M2, um, you can make this easier, because well, uh, iPhone and iPad apps can run on your laptop. and um, uh, that makes it so you don't have to install uh, certificate authorities on your phone. Uh, Charles can do that for you. Once, once you open Charles, all traffic flows through that, and uh, that makes it a lot easier to reverse engineer. So uh, here's an example of something you might want to do in the app, uh, or data you want to get from the app. Uh, they have these, uh, these loyalty programs where you can save up for, uh, in this case, towels, and every time you get a free, uh, full um, a card with eight stamps, uh, you get uh, towels for three or four euros. So what if you want to track your progress in this? Say you visit the Albert Heijn very much, and uh, you want to see how you progress, uh, progress along. Well, you just do an API request to, to this URL here. And uh, what you get back is uh, a JSON response. It's very handy. This is how the app works in the background. Your app is just a front end for their API. They've built an API, then built a front end, and that is how the app works. So we have to balance right there. It's very handy. And um, you can track that over time in uh, pretty Grafana dashboards. I'm a great fan of that. Um, I promise you for profit. So here's why it's for profit. Up at is a thing called a bonus box. What you need to do every week is go in there and pick out w uh, what kind of discounts you want. And uh, well, as you guessed, there's an API call for that too. You just do a request to that URL there, give the start date, you get back a JSON response with all the products that will be discounted for you and you only. Um, and we can also activate those products. Just send a few parameters, and then the offer is activated, and um, well, you have, uh, you have discounts that you wouldn't have if you uh, weren't going to go into the app every week and manually activate those offers. So uh, there's a little bit of profit. Uh, I did exactly that. I wrote a script, and it goes down uh, all, the, uh, all, all the things that I can, 
um, activates, and that um, uh, well, that makes it that I have cheaper groceries. I mean, Albert Heijn is not the cheapest. If you're from the Netherlands, you'd know that, um, <laughs> but they can be if if you have the right uh, the right offers. Um, <laughs> Here's the thing, though. Uh, Albertijn made it uh, pretty annoying to work with this API. Uh, it used to be that you can just send a login request via post, and then uh, you would be able to log in, get a token, and do all these API requests. Uh, what they did uh, a short while ago is enable CAPTCHA on that login process. And there is no other way uh, to get uh, an authentication token. So what you need to do is uh, oh, sorry. Uh, what you need to do is uh, man in the middle, either with a with a Mac that can run um, iOS apps, um, or you need to um, well install a CA certificate on your phone, listen to the uh, to the request it makes, and then you will see that it does a request for a refresh token, and that refresh token gives you. Uh, you can submit a request with that request token, and it gives you a new uh, authentication token and a request token. So if you do that, let's say, every half hour, you put that refresh token in a database, um, that, gives you, um, uh, that gives you quite a long time of uh, well, playing with the API. So what if you want to play around with this API for yourself? So some of you might have already seen this, but um, I flashed it a couple of seconds ago. This is a, an, a Swagger page. Uh, everyone that works with APIs will, will know what this is. And uh, this is basically some documentation for the uh, Albertine API. And um, because I want all of you to play around with this, I have released uh, this Swagger page and as well as the open API specification. So you can scan this QR code. and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, uh, go ahead for yourself. It's on GitHub, too. So if you uh, figure out more API uh, requests from the app, please submit a pull request. Uh, I really appreciate that. And I know scanning QR codes is scary. Um, at the end, uh, I will uh, give you some ways to, uh, to contact me. Um, like I said, the Albertine is not unique in these. Uh, a lot of apps work this way. This is an example for the Jumbo. When I uh, click on the plus to... Uh, at this uh, de delicious uh, hamburgers a la minute. Um, <laughs> uh, it just sends a put request to this, to this URL. And uh, the funny thing is, I'm not even authenticated here. I just downloaded the app and clicked the plus button. And uh, I saw this, uh, uh, this in, the, uh, in the app. So that means that Jumbo is still tracking users that haven't created an account yet. It's quite interesting. OK, so that's uh, enough about the API. I've given you some examples of how I use it. And uh, I've given you a way to well, play, with it, play with it yourself. And I'd now like to talk about uh, the brief story of uh, randombonuscards.nl. And some people started laughing. <laughs> uh, randombonuscards.nl is exactly what you, what you think it does. Uh, when you, once you go there, you'll be presented with a bonus card. That means that uh, Albert Heijn can track your purchases because all the time uses the bonus card to well, track you, and, um, uh, and in return, you get, uh, you get discounts. But most people don't want to be tracked. So here is randombonuscard.nl. It's meant to be used on your phone, and um, well, it works really well. A lot of people use it. How do I know a lot of people use it? I can track website visitors. Uh, I have a uh, Matomo install on, uh, on this website, so I can track that. Um, but I want to know how many people actually go to the Albert Heijn and scan that, co that, that code. There are uh, others as well. I'm not the only one who does this. Here are three examples. Bonuscard.nu, uh, welbonusgeendata.nl, and bonuscardje.nl. And these do exactly the same. Uh, although I don't know if these actually generate random bonus cards or if these are doing a similar thing to me. Because, uh, well, I thought one day, what if I put my own bonus card on there? And what if I only put my own bonus card on there? So I put several on them on there. Uh, you might think, well, 
that breaks the promise of a random bonus card. It's not random anymore. And that's true. But the reason you would like to use a random bonus card is to uh, have anonymity while, while you're shopping. And once there are enough users on the same bonus card, the, the profile gets so contaminated uh, that um, well, that uh, the data isn't of use anymore to the Albert Heijn. So I did that. And um, here is a map of uh, all the Albert Heinz that people did groceries with my bonus card. And this is only July. Uh, sorry, June. This is only June. Uh, because the, the Albert Heijn app gives you uh, uh, an API call to track receipts. And that receipt has data of the address of the store. So once you get that address and you put that through a, uh, uh, a location API, you get the letter to the longest use. And then uh, you store it in a database and you get this. I have more statistics as well. Here is uh, how many people used my website. It's 1,305. And this is just in, in June. Um, here you can track the, the, the amount of times it was used uh, per day. So it was quite a busy day there on the uh, 18th. Yeah. Um, not sure what's up with that. <laughs> um, of course, uh, Albert Heijn isn't the only app that has a private API, and Jumbo isn't as well. There are others. And, um, um, has anyone here heard of uh, Go Scooters? OK, a couple of people. Uh, Go Scooters uh, are a rental uh, service where you can download an app and unlock a scooter that's on the street. Um, people don't often treat them lightly. They take, don't be gentle, it's a rental a bit too far, if you ask me. Um, if you download the app, you get this, uh, this pretty map. And you can see all the, uh, the vehicles that are around you. So let me zoom out here, and I'll go to Almere. And uh, you can see how, how far zoomed out I am and how many dots you can see. So that means that uh, the data must be coming from somewhere, right? Oh, well, yep. And I'd actually like to do this with a live demo. So. <laughs> OK, let's see if I can drag my terminal over to the next screen. Yep, there we go. And can I maximize this? And then make the text a little bigger. All right. So once you do a uh, API request to uh, well, this URL here, uh, user.api.goldurban.services. What do, you, what do you think will happen? Um, well, I'm going to spoil that for you. I'm just going to press Enter and get a huge JSON request back, a JSON response back, with uh, well, a lot of data, actually, and more data than, uh, than I expected. Uh, some of these coordinates are pretty precise, and you can also see the license plate and the state of charge of these vehicles. Um, not sure if this is meant to be this way. <laughs> I'm guessing there can be some. Um, optimizations made here. Um, I'd like to go back to, to this statistic here. There's a reason I showed June instead of July. And that is um, my, uh, my scraper runs every uh, 30 minutes. And when it does that, it asks the Albertine API, hey, can you give me all of the receipts on my account? And there's no way to limit that request. So what started happening was um, that script started spewing out um, uh, error messages. And those error messages were 504 timeouts, uh, gateway timeouts. So <laughs> What happened was that the request got so big that the underlying servers weren't able to handle my request in time. <laughs> because my scraper runs every 10 minutes uh, or every 30 minutes, I, I put it down a little bit. Um, 
There, there's less strain on their databases, um, but I think some engineer at Albertine noticed because uh, they limited my, uh, uh, the results I got back. Um, I got curious, how big is that response? It's about 20,000 lines of JSON. So eh, I can, I can uh, understand why, why someone did something uh, about that. Uh, the only problem is they didn't uh, limit it on the last uh, uh, receipts. So when I go into the app now and I check my latest receipts, the latest one is from October last year. So no more pretty stats for me. The, uh, this card looks quite empty for today and rest of the month, uh, July as well. What can you do? So we've talked about the, uh, the Go sharing and we've checked out the uh, the Go Urban uh, API, so what's the, what's the moral of the story? Just open up your APIs. I mean, you've already built it. And uh, there can be, once you do that, you give other people the possibility to create amazing things. Uh, one example I heard was uh, someone that created a scanner app where you can scan a barcode and it will automatically add that to your shopping list. It's beneficial to all the time because it creates convenience and uh, once it's on your Albertine shopping list, well, then you're most likely to go to the Albertine to buy that product. Um, and um, you've already built it again, so why, why, not, why not release it? I mean, you can't release it the way it's, it is right now. You have to do some tweaks. I mean, mostly with the authentication. And uh, the paths can be cleaned up as well, but uh, hey, I don't care if, if Albertine releases this the way it is. Um, and I really hope they do. Another point, uh, by the way, is uh, data freedom. Uh, you can check, uh, track your own uh, groceries um, if you decide not to use randombonuscard.nl, which I highly, highly recommend. <laughs> um, so what can you do? Uh, does anyone know what these are? <laughs> awesome. I'm going to explain them anyway. <laughs> these are Amazon Dash buttons. Uh, the idea is that you order Amazon Dash buttons, and once you uh, push that button, um, one of these items will be added to your, uh, uh, to your shopping cart on, on uh, Amazon.nl or wherever you're from, and it will also uh, place the order for you if you want. Um, you could make your own uh, uh, one of these. Um, you can track the uptime uh, delivery uh, time slots. Um, and you can also just place an order uh, for delivery uh, through the Albertine app, which is uh, well, what I did, of course, to try it out. <laughs> because you, uh, w once uh, the, the courier comes, you pay at the door. So that makes it possible to, uh, to place an order like that. Um, so I'd like to thank you all for attending my talk. And if you want to contact me, that's, that's how you can do that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nick. That was amazing. <laughs> and, and thanks, dear, dear audience, for applauding a live demo. I think that is a very cool thing to do. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't even bring an offer to the demo gods, so... Uh. <laughs> Are there uh, any questions? And if you have a question, please move over to the microphone and ask your question there so the people in the live stream also can hear your question. Thank you so much. Uh, the person in the back was first, so you can go first. <laughs> um, I apologize if I missed this, but are you actually able to generate a, a random uh, barcode for, for the uh, bonus cards? Is there an algorithm to that, or is there just like any random unique ID would be valid? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the, uh, the bonus card is uh, just a uh, ROT13, uh, or a, sorry, a Aon13 barcode. And there's a certain range of uh, card numbers. And what you can do is generate your own and uh, ask the Albertine API if that is a valid uh, bonus card or not. And that is actually how randombonuscard.nl worked in the beginning. Um, it, it just, uh, once you loaded the page, it generated one. And if it was valid, it will show that to you. Um, I changed it up a bit for, well, statistics reasons. but. Uh, um, yeah, there is a way to actually generate random bonus cards, uh, random, random uh, bonus cards, yeah. 
Thank you for your question. Next one up. Go ahead. Superman. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for the uh, interesting talk. I saw you had uh, 272 uh, of the Handuk Segel things. <laughs> How did you get those? And uh, was that the random, random bonus card uh, account? Yep. Yep. That's nice. exactly it. <laughs> well done. Well done. If you need some, by the way, just come talk to me and I'll transfer some to you. It's no problem. <laughs> Thank you so much. Go ahead. So apart from uh, transaction costs and uh, interesting location data, what, do you have any other interesting data that you get via the not so random bonus cards? <laughs> um, I'm mainly thinking of interesting personal data. Right. No. <laughs> um, it's very hard to, uh, and I didn't actually try, but it's uh, very hard to track individual users that use the website. I, c I can see that uh, the same person that uh, used the bonus card in um, Almere also used it in Amsterdam a week later. I can see that. I, 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 and I don't even want to know that either. That's um, good to know. <laughs> <laughs> the promise is anonymity, and I want to keep it that way. I was wondering, do you have any tips, because you were currently discussing how to... Can you... Oh, you were currently discussing how to reverse engineer REST APIs. Yep. I was wondering, do you have also have any tips to reverse engineer GQL APIs or uh, WebSockets or other types of infrastructures? Mm -hmm. uh, the same method I used for, for this REST API also works for uh, GraphQL uh, apps or WebSockets. You can, once you man in the middle, you can see all the traffic that the... Uh, uh, that the app uh, uh, that the app generates, and you can also see the responses from the uh, from the server. And yeah, but I more I meant more like, do you know any specific tooling or any? Uh... Yeah, the same tooling I showed you. So oh, Verb Suite and Charles can also uh, see that kind of traffic. Oh, right. And um, the way I, I documented this API was with a Postman collection, so you can. Uh, uh, what I did is, is uh, copy the request as curl from uh, Charles, in this case, and then paste that into Postman, because Postman can understand curl commands. Yeah, of course, but Postman isn't able to understand WebSockets, right? Sorry? A Postman doesn't understand WebSockets. Yeah, that, that's yeah, true. Right. So you need another tool yeah. for that. All right. I don't have experience with WebSockets, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was wondering if you racked up that many handdoek segels, how many air miles did you rack up, and uh, <laughs> what did you buy with that? No comment. <laughs> I love that one. Please go ahead. Oh, yeah. Um, another question in the for-profit uh, part. Um, this likely also means that you can get all the product details and pricing and do nice comparisons with that? Exactly, yeah. That's, that's one way you could use this, uh, this API. Just grab the same products and the price and see how that develops over time. Yeah. yeah it, certainly, do, uh, do you have anything available for that or is that something that... Uh... Um, the, uh, the, the, the Swagger uh, I released and the, uh, the Open API specifications have some calls for uh, listing products in certain categories or searching for products. So that should help you with, uh, um, with, that, uh, with that endeavor. <laughs> um, you could also do the same thing as I did and um, uh, listen to the traffic that it generates and see what it does when you uh, tap a certain product. You most likely get a product ID and can query that for, for the price details. OK, thank you. Um, this is maybe more of an Albert Hein question than a reverse engineering question. Sure. But would it be possible for someone to take one of the random bonus cards and sign up in the Albert Hein app as though it was their bonus card, enroll in the Kopzegels program, and then harvest the Kopzegels from mm -hmm. inattentive people at checkout that weren't noticing that they were yep. purchasing some extra coupons? Uh uh, to clarify, by the way, I didn't enable the Koopzegels on random bonus cards, I don't know. <laughs> I want to keep you as a user. Um, uh, but no, it's not possible to claim this account to a different, uh, this bonus card to a different account, uh, because it's already linked to mine. Uh, so once you try that, it will say, this bonus card has already been linked to an account, and you cannot, uh, cannot link it to another one. Yeah, you had the uh, uh, Persoonlijke Bonus, which changes every week. 
Uh, yep. But I noticed in the API call that there's a start date and an end date. Can you yep. also like query the bonus that you get next week or next month? Uh, you can uh, query the bonus you get next week uh, from uh, Thursday of the previous week. So um, once it is Thursday, you can do that request with the, with the start date, and the start date should be a, a Monday. Um, and that gives you back uh, the, the results. Uh, if you do that before then, uh, you will get back uh, an error message. So unfortunately, uh, no. <laughs> Go ahead. Ah, yeah, so I myself use just an uh, unactivated bonus card I grabbed from near the till, um, which also works. Uh, random bonus card is a lot better, so thanks for that. Is there any chance that it generates a random one which you then register, as you just said, uh, which then collides and maybe steals away my bonus card? <laughs> well, but, like I said uh, before, the, uh, the way it, it, it used to work uh, was that it generated a random number and checked that against the API and um, uh, then, then showed you that code or not. Um, if that code was already linked to a different Albert Heijn account, I'd actually not show it, but generate a new one. Um, because, well, someone can enable co-op sales, and that, that would um, incur costs on, uh, on, on the users, and I don't want that. OK, so but it is possible that my unactivated bonus card was randomly generated by the app, and you registered it. That is, in theory, possible, yes. OK. okay. How large is the key space, roundabout? <laughs> um, I don't know off the top of my head. I, I can look that up for you. Cheers. Thanks. Thank you very much. I have uh, one question from the internet, from uh, Turim. He was uh, wondering on the random bonus card if you automatically enabled all bonuses on it. Yep. You that's, do. What, that, that's a service from me to you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> if you. If you use that, uh, that website, uh, I showed you a screenshot of the, uh, of the scripts. Uh, oh, it's not on the screen yet. Can, yeah, thank you. Oh, sorry. Now it is. Where is my screenshots? Here it is. It does this every week for uh, all the bonus cards that are on randombonuscard.nl. Um, and what it does is uh, I enabled all the time premium for reasons I'm not going to comment on. <laughs> you can figure that one out. Um, but it also gives me 10. Um, uh, 10 offers to choose from instead of five. Uh, what you could do is uh, um, bring in some more logic. For example, if you're a fan of uh, a certain type of food, you could uh, do some pattern matching and see when that is um, in your bonus box, and then uh, use that to um, activate that, that offer every, every week. What this does is just activates the first 10. So pretty simple, but uh, yeah, it works. OK, thank you. I see another question. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I think that was it then. Thank you. Yeah, very we have much time for one more. Um, because I was interested, you, you told me something about that Albert Heijn hasn't reached out to you yet, right? Nope. Oh. No. <laughs> I'd really like to hear from them. Uh, I want to know. So, uh, if anyone has any connections. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Oh, here we have. Yay! Really? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Come talk to me after. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again, or, Nick. Um, I think uh, I'll put oh. my contact details on there again so you know how Can to we get it? Oh, yeah. Here. If you want to contact Nick, his contacts are on the sheets. Uh, you have been an amazing crowd. Give him a last big round of applause because I think you did a great job. Thank you. <laughs>